Hi everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing my part two of my doodle and sketch box for September, but this is for the watercolor box only. If you remember my part one video, I received two boxes for the month of September and this one will be on the watercolor box only and my part two for the other box will be probably later this week. And these are the supplies that I received. I received um, four brushes. I received my Kleenex, of course, for dabbing up surfaces. Five watercolors. Four of them are um, Extra Fine Watercolor by PWC, which is the Shin Han, by Shinhan Art. And then I also received a sixth color by Van Gogh, which is Payne's Gray. Now, um, I also received this watercolor paper and I showed you the surface in the part one video and I did not see this little sticker here that explained exactly what I received. It said that I received um, Moulin du Roy Torshan watercolor paper. And Torshan is a special kind of watercolor paper. Um, there's like a matte surface, there's rough surface, there's extra rough surfaces, but the term Torshan um, is a French term and it's associated with very coarse kind of linen structure to the to the paper. This is 100% cotton. Um, papers that are called torsion have a distinctive kind of an undulating surface structure, which I also showed close up in the part one video. This paper has a very distinct um, kind of pattern or structure on it. And that allows the paints to flow differently on this type of paper than on other watercolor papers. Um, with wet into wet, the most, most colors would bleed a lot and produce prominent halos. That's the kind of, kind of look you would get. And, and also, um, the, the sizing of the paper kind of creates really brilliant pictures in the paper. Um, Torshan papers are really not suitable for beginners, um, but are really more for more experienced painters. I'm not saying that beginners shouldn't try them. I think that um, you should try them if you're a beginner, but you might find yourself frustrated if this was the type of paper that you started out on. So I wouldn't recommend it for um, a beginner. The only one problem that I have with this paper, and I don't know if you can see it here, but the Moulin de Roy um, signature is really high up on the paper surface, which is frustrating to me because then you lose a lot of the surface. Here it is backwards. I don't know. I'm going to see if you can see this here. Um, you can kind of see a faint writing here. That's upside down, but um, see how high up it is? It's this high up on the paper, which means then that I would have to tape my paper above that so that if if I were to give somebody a painting, I would not want this insignia on a framed painting. I mean, I don't know who would, whether it's Arches or Fabriano or Moulin de Roy or whatever. But um, anyway... So I just wanted to point that out. It can be frustrating when you have those. And if you do, just make sure that you paint above that, um, that line. And you can see I forgot and I taped below that line. So I'm going to have to fix that. But anyway, um, so that's what this paper is. I had some question about it when I did open the box. And then I did a little more um, research. And then finally saw... <laughs> saw right there on the bag that it says Torshan paper, which is a very rough paper. Um, so if you were to be starting out on uh, doing watercolor and you're a beginner, I would suggest that you start out with a 140 pound, um, just regular cold press, cold press watercolor paper. Also, I wanted to um, answer a couple questions regarding that Inktober video that I did the other day. Um, this group that I'd like to form is, is a very informal group, just a place to post your paintings. Um, 
and then you can leave people comments on their Instagram page by clicking on their painting. The way we can form the group is by using the hashtag Sharon Cullen Art without spaces. If you're not familiar with hashtagging, you just use the hashtag or pound sign on your keyboard and then without a space, type in your full word or phrase without spaces. And that will put everybody in a group. And if you're not familiar with Instagram, as some of you are not, I've been receiving emails on it, um, there is a way that you can search for these um, paintings. And, and I'll show you. Let me, let me just do a quick um, pull up of my Instagram here. Uh... Okay, now if I was going to search, I'd go to the search button right here. I don't know if you can all see this pretty well. I think you can see it pretty well. I'm going to turn off my light here and zoom in a little bit here. And if you see this search button right here, you just click on that, and then there's a search box up at the top, and you would type in, uh, where's my hashtag? Hashtag, whoops, that's not my hashtag. Hashtag Sharon Cullen Art without spaces. And I had posted some of those hashtags on some of my posts in the past. So it says there's six public posts under Sharon Cullen Art right now. So if you click on them, it brings them all up. And they're just a few of the paintings that I had done in the past. Now, all of you who use this hashtag, Sharon Cullen Art can then click on a painting to get a bigger view of it. And then if you'd like to leave that person a comment, you just hit the comment button there and you can leave your comment right here and then hit post. That's all you have to do. But in order for it to be added into the all of the Inktober sketches, you'll not only want to do that, but you'll also want to do a hashtag Inktober. Uh, let's look at last year. Hashtag Inktober 2016. There's 1,302,677 posts under that. And then some people did day eight, day 12, day 13, day one. And you'll see that there's separate posts for each day. So you can also add that hashtag, add that into your hashtag as well. But for the 2016, here are some of the posts that came up. Now, like there, there are many, many, um, different educational levels of, of sketches here like this one is very elaborate pretty amazing work and this as well um even this one the tin man isn't that adorable that was done on that beige paper that i showed you the other day and somebody used black and white ink on it and it looks like they spread some of their ink around to make it gray which is really cool oh Gio El Palato. I know her. She follows me on Instagram already. I wonder if you are a follower of me on YouTube or not. But anyway, you'll see that there's all different levels. Some just did designs. Um, so don't be afraid to post. Here's one right here by Brianna Pump. And so there's all sorts of skill levels. So do not be afraid to post. Here's another one that somebody posted. And another one, this one looks like a child's post. Um, although they're smoking, so that's not real cool. <laughs> but anyway, um, as you see, they're all different skill levels. So I want you guys to post, okay? And then use the hashtag Inktober. Then a second hashtag, Inktober 2017. Then a third hashtag, Sharon Cullen Art, which will put them all into that group. Then all you have to do is look up 
Sharon Cullen art to see what's in our group. And aside from those six paintings that I had there that are mine, everybody else's will show up under that Sharon Cullen art hashtag. They're not going to show up on my page, but they're going to show up under that hashtag. So you got to go to the search. And then, um, like, let's say if Thomas Blanchard, who is wine lover, or Cheryl Wright, um, who are all both YouTube followers of mine, um, if they post something with the hashtag Inktober or hashtag Sharon Cullen Art, it's going to go to that hashtag. It will also show up on her page. Um, and if she had if she had tagged this Sharon Cullen Art, then you would also see it under Sharon Cullen Art. She usually hashtags a bunch of people, but I don't see any tags on this one. I'm trying to find one um, that she may have done. She put in some followers. Don't use the at sign, though, for our group. Just use the hashtag. So anyway, I want to get on to the other thing, uh, the painting here. And if you have any other questions about that on Instagram, just e send me an email or a comment down below, and I will try to help you out as best I can. Um, now, I did do a quick one. I have ruined this uh a little bit so it didn't turn out real well but this is basically the painting we're going to be doing I, I ruined these two roses trying to mix my colors with what they gave me um, but basically this is what I'm going to be doing today um, I think it was a wood background that's the impression I was getting from the artist who did it but there was no photo reference so I was just basically trying to follow her so I think what she was doing was a wood background although she had a lot of like black and gray paint splotches and stuff all over so I'm wondering if the photo she may have used um, didn't have like crackled paint or something on wood but uh, this is basically what I'm going to be doing today so stay tuned and I'm going to put this in time lapse um, only because um, I can't really instruct the video if you didn't purchase the box so um, it's not fair to doodle and sketch for me to do that but I can do it in time lapse for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I've laid out all of the colors that I will be using here today. Um, I don't know if you could see them before or not. I don't think so. Um, but I have down my opera pink, my permanent red, my peacock blue, Payne's gray, um, this one was permanent yellow light and then permanent yellow deep. Those are the only colors I will be using and I'm going to mix all of my colors from that. Oh, also my brushes, I will be using a um, Rublev size 12 mop. This is the one that came in the box. It's the same exact um, brush, but I'm saving this um, for another time if I do a giveaway or something like that, I might add that in. Um, then there is a, um, a rigger size one, a size four Kalinsky mix, and a size three Kalinsky brush that I will also be using. So let's go ahead and get to it. I decided to sketch with um, a little bit of Payne's Gray that is... Um, diluted on my brush rather than using a pencil <clears throat> and um, that's basically what she also did in the video but it's pretty it was a pretty simple sketch so um, I was a little bit surprised that it wasn't a little more challenging um, usually there's a little more challenge involved with the um, watercolor boxes this is the first time it's been this simple uh, but I suppose that's good when there's some real early beginners trying to do these videos. They probably need um, something a little simpler now and then too. And I'm just mixing up a bunch of different colors here in order to do my wood grain on the background. Um, I'm just kind of blending different colors in uh, all over, mostly in a reddish kind of a 
hue though, which is what they did in the video. Um, sorry, I don't have any uh, music for you. For some reason, the app that I use to transfer the music over to my uh, video editor isn't working, and I'm not sure why. So I've got to kind of figure that out. I have a new iPad Pro that I was using to do that with before on my iPad, and I have a new phone which has my app on it, so I'm not sure why I'm not receiving the emails, but they're, they seem to be shipping out or sending out, and I'm not getting them over here to put the music on, so you just have to deal with me talking. Um, now I'm just going to continually add glazes to these flowers, um, let them dry, and then I come back to them and I add a little bit more to them as I go, mixing different colors of reds and blues into the flowers as I go along. Also, I wanted to update you guys on my dad. First of all, thank you for all the well wishes and prayers that you've um, sent. That has meant so much to me. You guys are so sweet. Um, he did not get better as we had hoped. And so on Saturday, I made a call over to the um, nursing home, the rehab center where he was staying, and I asked that they have an ambulance take him over to the hospital because I just was feeling too uneasy about it. Um, I didn't feel like he was getting any better. So he went into the hospital on Saturday. He's in a medical progressive unit, which is um, in, like an intensive care step-down unit. Um, and he seems says he's feeling a little bit better, but not a lot. Um He's having a lot of difficulty breathing. They haven't found a whole lot on tests, but then they thought maybe he had an upper respiratory infection that brought all of this on, but I, he could barely breathe. So I don't, I don't understand what's going on. But anyway, um, he's struggling a little bit, and I appreciate all the prayers and well wishes and keep them coming. Hopefully he'll continue to get better. I do feel a little more comfortable with him being in the hospital though. So thanks. I didn't quite like the way that was turning out, so I just kind of erased some of the um, paint there. And the same with this spot over here. I didn't like the way that was looking either. I wish I would have left it like that and stopped there, but I think I continually overworked these until I was very unhappy. But um, it's all right. You know, they, it's just fun to fool around with them. Anyway, and the nice thing about this Torshan paper is the ability to lift color up. It is so easy to lift color with this paper. And I don't know if it's the sizing or what it is, but um, anytime I've used Torshan paper, I've had that ability to lift color really well. So it is kind of nice to have that option anyway. So I went back and forth this way, adding and changing up color for a little while until I decided that I was finished with it.
Now here I'm just mixing some brown up. Um, I need a lot in order to um, do this. And I'm splaying the edges of my mop in order to get kind of a wood grain appearance. I'm trying to stick with only the, um, the brushes that they gave me in the box. Now in the video, she had, it looked like about a one inch, maybe one and a half inch flat brush that she also used in order to do that wood grain but I didn't have that option. So, and again, um, my box was a little bit different than the box that the artist used. Now she had um, that one inch brush that I told you about, but she didn't get a, I don't think she had a rigger, um, or maybe she didn't have the size three brush that I received. And she didn't have the Payne's Gray that I received either so I ended up getting some extra paint that she didn't have and she had a little different brush than I had but it all worked out because wood grain is so easy to do and it's so fun to do you really can't mess it up um, because there's so much going on in wood anyway uh, so I'm going to do a video on wood grain though for you I know some of you had asked for that in the past so <clears throat> I'll be doing that at some point as well. And in the video also, it did show a lot of blue paint added on. I'm wondering if maybe there was some, like, old paint stains in the wood that she had in the picture she was using. I didn't have a video, um, or I'm sorry, a photo reference to go off of. So I just had to kind of wing it after watching the video. I added a few extra sprigs of grass that weren't in the video, but I didn't work as much on the wood. I felt like it was a little overworked in the video that I watched, so I kind of preferred mine this way. Um, but I'm coming just about to the end here. <clears throat> okay, so here is what I did for the um, Doodle and Sketch Challenge for September's watercolor box. And um, that's pretty much it. I kind I like the way this flower turned out. I did not like these two. These, I feel like I overworked because I was thinking too hard. The wood grain is very easy to do, and that's always fun. I love doing wood grain, um, and there's so many ways you can do it. Uh, I'll, I'll show you guys how to do that again in another video. Um, but anyway, that's it for September's watercolor box for Doodle and Sketch. Everybody remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. God bless you. Love you guys. Bye-bye.